one two one two is tk's two cents tuesdays and thursdays at 12 p.m eastern time i take two tweets and i give you a couple of thoughts on each tweet to take you beyond the 140 characters that you see on twitter today i'm going to talk about making friends and money slowly i know everybody else is talking about the opposite i know all the self-help books and the self-help courses are talking about how to make friends and become a person of influence as fast as possible how to make money as fast as possible and today i want to make the case for taking both of those things slowly because i think if you build up your friends and you build up your wealth slowly but surely you get the highest quality so let's start with tweet one all right the loneliness that comes from having no conviction is greater than the kind that comes from having no friends. No amount of company can appease you if you have to compromise self-honesty and individuality to keep it. It's only fun to be liked when it's the real you that they like. Ever since I was a kid, I have always been a nerd. There is nothing that I have ever loved more than just having some alone time to be with my books and to just read and think. Like, I, I'm like my, for most of my life, I've been like that dude named Harry Bemis from a Twilight Zone episode. He's this guy, all he wants to do is just read, right? And he's got people always taking books out of his hands. Like, you know, Harry Bemis, you need to get out there and live. Harry Bemis, you need to go do this and that. And the dude just wants to be alone so he can read his books. That's what makes him happy. That's how I felt for most of my life. And, um, you know, it, was, it wasn't until I got a little older that I started to appreciate this side of myself and that I started to embrace it. And ironically, that's when life began to work for me. When I stopped condemning myself for enjoying a long time and wanting to read books and I stopped comparing myself with other people or I stopped letting other people compare me with them. That's when life really began to work. But there's a particular story where this message really came home and it says a lot about the nature of loneliness and friendship. So when I was in college, there was this coffee shop called Rocket Star Cafe. It was on the edge of campus. It was open, you know, like till three in the morning. And I would go there with my little stack of nerd books. And I would just sit there with my little coffee and I would read. And, you know, there were other nerds at the coffee shop too. Who else is going to be there, right? And we would have the best conversations in the world. And these were the times of my life. However, I had a separate group of friends. These people were more popular. They liked to party. They liked to go out. And man, they would stay on my case about wanting to nerd out. Like, like people worry about folks who like to be alone and read. They worry that you're not gonna have social skills. They worry that you're gonna become a hermit. And so they always encourage you to go out. This is what my friends did to me. Come on, man, you gotta go out. You need to come out. You can't be reading all the time. And so while a lot of people struggle with things like maybe they spend their time studying, but they wish they were out partying, I spent a lot of time being out partying, wishing I was somewhere studying, right? Had a lot of moments of regret like, regret like that. But I didn't want to lose my friends. I wanted to be cool too. And I didn't want people to think bad of me. And I remember at the end of the year, I got so behind on my studies because I just wasn't doing it that I didn't graduate on time. And so I'm, I'm sitting at graduation ceremony because all my friends are graduating. The same ones that encouraged me to go partying with them. Somehow they got their stuff done and they graduated on time and not me. Sitting in the audience with their family members, with their friends, watching my homies on stage graduating on time. And there was this part where like they played this movie with this sentimental music. And, and these were all of the moments over the years, you know, from when people were freshmen all the way to when they were seniors. And as I watched that, I got really emotional and I started to cry, not because I was happy for my friends, but because I was unhappy for me. I felt loneliness. That might be a strange word to use for a situation like that, but I felt loneliness because I knew that I was in the wrong place. I should not be sitting here in the audience. My family and my friends should be sitting here in this audience and I should be on that stage with them taking pictures of me. But I was not where I was supposed to be. I felt disconnected from myself because I had just spent the past year not being true to myself. And I felt so much pain. And you know what? I came back and did the same thing the next year. It took me six years to graduate because I still didn't learn my lesson. I said, yes, 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 yes to what my friends wanted me to do. And I was never true to the nerd in me who was like, dude, just go somewhere, be alone, take a walk, think, read your books. And here's what I learned. You can be in a room full of people and have all the popular people loving you. 
and you can still be lonely because loneliness is really being disconnected with from friendship with yourself. I heard somebody say, it's okay if other people don't like you, but you definitely can't afford to not like yourself. You know what I mean? Like if you have to choose between friendship with others and friendship with yourself, you don't want to sacrifice the latter because you got to live with you every day, all day. And sometimes I think we, we misdefine the word friend. We think a friend is just somebody that wants to hang out with you, just somebody that has a good time being around you. But a friend is also someone that supports your principles and your priorities and your dreams and your sense of purpose and your calling. And if you got people in your life that love to hang out with you, but they can't support those things, those aren't friends, those are socialites. And you never get a chance to see what it's like to have great friends until you start by being true to yourself rather than starting by trying to make friends. Because when you're true to yourself, the people that aren't really worthy of you, they begin to fade away. But the people that can support you, the people that resonate with you, the people that get you, they begin to come closer. So I thank God for these friends because these books have been some of the greatest friends of my life, but these books have also introduced me to some of the most awesome human beings that I will ever meet. Because by being true to myself, I facilitated the best kind of connection with others. So look, if you really want to avoid loneliness, don't compromise who you truly are and what you really want out of life, out of a fear of being uncool to somebody else. I heard Terrence McKenna say one time, I don't know if I'm cool or not, but I'm incredibly resistant to anyone else's attempts to make me feel uncool. If anybody tries to make you feel uncool, that's not a friend. Go where you are celebrated, not where you're tolerated, to quote the words of my man, Mike Murdoch. And it doesn't matter if you like to read a lot or if you don't like to read a lot. It doesn't matter if your thing is basketball, music, whatever it is. Be true to you. And as you are true to yourself, that's the way you make the best kind of friends in life. Anything else is a lonely path, even if a bunch of people are around you. Let's go to tweet number two. Don't abandon your interests merely because you haven't figured out a way to monetize them yet. All right, today I want to talk about the lost art of exploration and experimentation. TK, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? I'm 19 years old and I have to figure out in the next three weeks what I want to do for the rest of my life. So many people are so paranoid about finding their passion, figuring out their calling, that they treat it like this riddle with an expiration date that they've got to figure out. And everybody's so worried that people don't know how to be curious anymore. They don't know how to explore anymore. They don't know how to give time to the very thing that leads to the most valuable forms of self-discovery and the very things that produces innovation and creativity. So let me give you an analogy for how this works. I want you to think about like a first date. Let's say you meet someone and you're interested in them. Now, typically when you meet someone, you don't have the ability to see deeply into their soul. You're reacting to something superficial. Could be the way they talk, something you heard them say, some music they listen to, the way they look. There's something about this person that makes you interested, okay? So maybe you ask this person to go out for coffee with you or to, to go hang out or something like that. Now imagine you go to a first date and you sit down with this person and you say, where is this relationship going? Are we going to get married or not? Oh my gosh, if you do that, you just blew it, right? You just blew the opportunity to discover anything interesting that lets you know where this relationship goes. The job of a first date is not to get married. It's not to conduct an interview to see if this person is going to be a good spouse someday. That may be the end goal, but you keep that to yourself. The job of a first date is just to be interested. Let's get to know this person. Let's ask some questions. Let's explore. Let's see what they're about. And let's see if there's room for a second date. That's it. That's a small goal. But that small goal is the kind of goal that gets you everywhere you need to be. If there's a second date and it goes really well, all right, let's do a third date. And you eventually get to the point of like maybe having a spouse. It's the same with your interests. You can't demand of yourself that everything you do is something that has to be like directly related to what your dream is supposed to be, or that it's something that like has to be really obvious what the value is. You can only know what's valuable by allowing yourself to follow your curiosities long enough without putting pressure on yourself to justify it in terms of how much money it's gonna make me. You know, like for instance, if you see in some businesses, 
they have what's called an R&D department, research and development. And the job of R&D is to just like look for things that are interesting, to just explore, look into things that don't have anything to do with our bottom line because you never know what you might find. That's what your curiosity is like. Your curiosity is like your own personal R&D department. It's letting you know, hey, these are the things you should look into. These are the things you should investigate. It doesn't matter if you know for sure you wanna do them for the rest of your life. Just give yourself time to explore them. One of the things I see happening with so many people stressing out about their career is they start to think about the money too fast. And if you think about money too fast, you don't get to make the best kind of money. Take it a little bit slow. That doesn't mean you ignore your financial needs, but if you're interested in something, give yourself some time to read up on it. Give yourself some time to look into it because that's where the ability to make interesting connections come from. You know, I like to read a lot of books, not because I think it makes me look important, not because other people want me to read them, but because I'm curious about all this stuff. And sometimes my friends ask me, what are you gonna do with all that information? And I tell them, I don't know. I don't read books because I know what I'm gonna do with the information. I read books because I'm curious about what the information is going to do with me. That's what fascinates me. And that's what curiosity is. You investigate things, you explore things because you get the opportunity to discover things about yourself along the way so that you might even surprise yourself someday. So don't put pressure on yourself to make money too fast. Give yourself a chance to get to know things, to try things out. And over time with the self-knowledge that comes from that, you'll have a much clearer idea of not only what you wanna do, but how to make money from it. But don't expect to know the answers to those questions in the first 30 seconds of being interested in something. Just like a first date, be cool, relax, get to know what you're interested in, and that's how you go further. Peace out.